We have uh, Stephen Clark joining us. He's a journalist for Space Flight Now, an online news source for all things space related. Um, you know, the, the, the International Space Station was launched back in 1998, so you expect to see problems over time. Explain this leak to us, uh, its significance, and can these sorts of things be prevented in the future, given what Sean was just saying? There's all this stuff hurtling around out there. Well, this is the first time that the International Space Station has uh, lost pressure uh, in, in my memory of covering the space program. Um, there are often occasions where uh, the space station crew is alerted of a potential collision with, uh, with a piece of space junk or something uh, of that sort, and they can steer out of the way or they can uh, take shelter during the time of greatest uh, risk. Uh, but uh, so whatever caused this, if it was space debris, um, it was uh, much too small to be tracked by any sort of telescope or radar, so it was very hard to uh, predict this one coming. You know, uh, Stephen, I was saying that it uh, was launched in 1998. When it was first launched, they thought perhaps it could last through 2015. It's still chugging out there, but there are issues, aren't there? I mean, I read somewhere where one side is actually getting baked by the sun. The other, it's, it's freezing on the other side. Talk to me about its age, uh, the extremes that it's facing out there, some of the challenges uh, it faces. Well, the International Space Station, as it goes around the Earth every 90 minutes or so, uh, can see temperature swings of hundreds of degrees uh, back and forth on the day and night side. And uh, those sorts of temperature st uh, swings cause great thermal stress and structural stress on the, on the space station modules themselves. And you're right, it was designed for 15 years. Um, the oldest module was launched uh, 20 years ago, this coming November. Uh, but much of the space station is, is much more, was launched much more recently. Some, some items were launched uh, less than 10 years ago. And NASA and their international partners are analyzing uh, or have analyzed the strength of those modules and believe that those modules will be safe to continue flying until at least 2028. Let's talk about the larger issue that uh, Sean was just talking about, space junk. I mean, there's lots of stuff out there, isn't there? Yeah, uh, like Sean said, uh, millions of objects potentially in low Earth orbit and, and other orbital regimes. Um, 23,000 of them are, are believed to be bigger than a softball. And those are the objects that are big enough to be tracked by radar. Um, but there are innumerable uh, smaller pieces of metal, pieces of paint that come off old satellites, old rockets that are impossible to track right now. And you never know when they're going to uh, come your way. Yeah, I guess you would think of this as litter out in space. What can be done about it? Anything? Well, there are several companies who believe they can actually make money uh, removing debris from uh, low Earth orbit. Um, but uh, so far, that hasn't really been demonstrated to be econo economically feasible. Uh, there is a, a British team from the University of Surrey who has a satellite up in orbit right now, uh, about to start some experiments uh, to see uh, if it can remove some small pieces of debris from, from orbit. Um, but I think that the economic and legal arguments are, are, or concerns are much more paramount than the technical concerns right now. Um, you know, who pays for it? Uh, who has liability for removing these objects from orbit? Those are the big questions that face uh, the, the space officials nowadays. Let me ask you this as a final question. Uh, we all think about traveling to Mars and traveling here, traveling there. How much are uh, people in, in this industry thinking about this issue, though, space junk? Because the more stuff you put out there, uh, it's out there. I think, I think people are becoming more and more um, cognizant of the issue. Uh, you know, a, a lot of, there are a lot of guidelines that, that uh, companies follow voluntarily, mind you, nowadays, that if they launch something into orbit, that it has to come back within 25 years. That seems like a long time, but there are still pieces of space junk in orbit from the 1950s and 60s. So um, uh, I think people are becoming more cognizant of it but um, you know, until potentially until there there is a, a major incident, uh, there was a collision, for example, of two satellites uh, with you know nobody on board, nobody was hurt uh, back in 2009 that got a lot of people's attention, um, and and things like things like that really brought this issue to the forefront, I believe. Well, Stephen, fascinating uh, conversation. Thanks so much for joining us from Austin. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.